Hi, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. This is it. After seven instructional episodes, we're finally ready to begin the gameplay. And this is the most nervous I've ever been before starting a gameplay episode. There are so many rules. I'm going to be shooting video, trying to coordinate all of that. This is a tabletop full of mistake landmines that I am just going to be tripping all over, I'm sure. But I'm going to do my best, and thankfully Luke will be here to help me out as well. And if anything does slip by, which I'm sure it will, we will do our best to correct those in the following episodes so no one gets led too far astray. But to help us jump right in, we've already set up the tabletop and deployed our forces. And if you're curious about how we would have done that, go back to the last instructional episode, episode 7, where we talk about how to set up for a scenario. For this playthrough, we want to keep things as simple as possible. Simple units, a simple objective, and simple conditions. The objective is called attrition, and what that means is over the course of the gameplay, five rounds, every time a player completely destroys a unit of an opponent, they will then collect the army point value of that unit as part of their score. So you do not get any points for only partially destroying a unit, only completely destroyed units will give you some part of the points. And we've added a little bit of a twist to this. In the center of the table, we've placed a barrel with a little bit of blue sticky tack on it. And if you end up in possession of that barrel at the end of the game, you're going to get an additional 20 points. So how do you collect the barrel? If you can get the unit leader from one of your units in base contact with that barrel, then for an action, you can pick it up. Then you just sort of keep the barrel with that unit for the rest of the game. Unless, of course, that unit leader gets killed, in which case they're going to drop the barrel right where their model had been standing, and then someone else, another unit leader, is going to be able to pick it up. For an additional action, you can also drop the barrel if you want to maybe be able to leave it behind for another unit that you think can maybe better protect it as the game goes on. So conditions, we're keeping those very simple because there are none. So nothing from the scenario is going to actually impact the gameplay. And then deployment, we're going to be deploying within 9 inches of the long edge. So I'm going to be sitting on this side of the table, and Luke's going to be sitting on the side of the table where you are. Now when we come back, Luke and I are going to very quickly go over the units that we have in our platoons, so you guys can get an understanding very quickly of how their special abilities and weapons work. Okay, we've been joined by... Luke Smith. And just before we get started, I want to walk you guys very quickly through the different units we put in our platoons so I can tell you guys any special abilities they might have. But I'm going to do it very quickly because we want to get right into the action. I built a combat platoon using Bazooka Joe's leader ability to make him the command section of that platoon. This actually means we're going to be ignoring his Black Ops special ability because he won't be able to use it. His weapon, the Grenade Launcher, has a couple of special rules. Basically, even if I don't roll any hits when I attack with this, the target unit will take a suppression token, and that unit also has to ignore the benefits of cover. Now, because he's the command section, he gets this special order called Fire for Effect. Once per command phase, he is able to issue an order to a unit with the Artillery Strike special ability. That unit will then roll a die, and if a hit is rolled, that unit can now call in an airstrike on any target unit that it can see on the battlefield. And it can also target another unit up to six inches away. So this stat here on the bottom, this weapon, the 220 millimeter long tom, this is the weapon stat for that airstrike. This is not actually a weapon that Bazooka Joe is carrying around that he can fire. Next up we have the hammers. They have the jump special ability. Anytime they take a move or march move action, they're going to be able to ignore obstacles up to 9 inches tall. These guys can literally jump over buildings. And when they move, enemies cannot react. They also have rocket punch. Normally when you roll for attack, you're going to be looking for these crosshairs on the dice to count as hits. But for these guys, their rocket punch means that the blank side counts as hits. Now that may seem very powerful, and it is, but it's a close combat weapon, so they have to get up close first before they can actually use this. Here we have the Grim Reapers. We've seen them before. They also have the Jump Special Ability and the Rocket Punch weapon, but they also have a ranged weapon as well. I told you we were going to keep things simple. <laughs> the Tank Busters, they also have the Jump Special Ability and Rocket Punch. They have a ranged weapon as well, but they differ from the Grim Reapers a bit because their ranged weapon is better for taking out vehicles. Now this unit is a little bit different. This is the Barbecue Squad. They have the fast special ability. Anytime they take a move action or a march move, they're going to be able to move an additional six inches. 
They cannot use this additional six inches if they do a move reaction. They also have a model in the unit carrying a flamethrower. When you use this weapon, you count up the number of models in the target unit, and that's how many dice you roll. And the target unit also does not get the benefit of cover. The demolition charge weapon we get to ignore because you'd only use this against certain obstacles that come from a scenario, and we're not using obstacles in this scenario. Here is the 13 Foxtrot Observer Team. They have the artillery strike special ability we talked about earlier that means the command section is going to be able to use these guys to call in airstrikes. We can ignore their Radio Man special ability, it won't come into effect during this gameplay. But they do have the team special ability. Because they're a smaller unit, they're better at taking advantage of cover, so when they're in soft cover, it actually gets upgraded to hard cover. Next up, we have the Crack Shots Sniper Team. They have the Agile special ability, which means when they make a move reaction, they can go an additional six inches if they choose. One of the models here, this one carrying the sniper weapon, has the sniper special ability. And that means when it targets a unit, that targeted unit cannot do armor rolls or benefit from cover. And then because there's a spotter in the unit, this model here, it gets to reverse combat dice on non-close combat attacks. So once again, like the rocket punch, it's going to hit on dice rolls that are blank. It also has the team special ability and they're carrying grenades. Like the grenade launcher that our command section leader has, the target unit will always take suppression tokens when attacked and they have to ignore cover. The main difference between this and the grenade launcher that Bazooka Joe has is it's not as powerful and its range is shorter. Luke has built a blip cruise platoon using Sigrid's leader special ability to make her the command section of the platoon. She also has the Berserk special ability, so once per game, before he does rolls for an attack, he's going to be able to re-roll any of the combat dice during that attack. She's also able to issue this special order once per command phase to a unit that lost models during the last turn. For every model lost, Luke is going to be able to roll a die, and for every hit rolled, he's going to be able to add a zombie model to a new zombie unit that has to be placed within three inches of the unit that lost those models. This new unit will not contribute army points to me if I then destroy it. Sigrid also has a laser pistol, and this has the laser special ability. So every initial hit that he rolls, he's then gonna be able to roll additional hits. So for example, if he rolled two dice, and one of them was a hit, and one of them was a miss, because of this one hit, he's gonna be able to take an additional one die and then roll that as well. Now, even if you roll a second hit, he's not going to then be able to keep rolling. It's only off of the first roll that you count up the number of hits and then roll that many number of dice again. The Heavy Recon Grenadiers have the Damage Resilient Special Ability. That means they always roll one additional die when making an armor roll. The Laser Grenadiers, no surprise, have lasers with that laser special ability. So any time that they roll hits initially, they can take that number of dice and roll again to potentially accrue additional hits. Luke also decided to add some zombies to his platoon. These guys have a special ability that causes them to ignore all effects of suppression, and they never take suppression tokens. On top of that, because they're so crazy, you always downgrade their cover. So if they're in hard cover, you consider it to be soft cover. If they're in soft cover, it's like they have no cover at all. They also have the damage resilient ability, so they're going to roll an additional die for armor rolls. And they're fast. We saw that before. Whenever he takes a move action, he'll be able to take an additional six inches of movement. And this is just a reminder that when a zombie is part of a resurrected zombie unit, as we saw as part of a special order, when they come back, instead of having these panzer gloves, they're instead going to be equipped with combat knives. Luke was quite keen to have some Axis gorillas in his platoon. The Blitzcruise ape have the same ability as the zombies in that they never take suppression tokens and they ignore the effects of suppression. And they're also considered to always be in command range. So no matter where they are on the table during the command phase, you can give these guys an order. They have the climb special ability, which allows them to freely move over terrain that's up to six inches tall. And they can also move up two floors, in other words, vertically six inches. Normally you can only move three inches vertically in a single move. They have the fast special ability, and we already saw that. And finally, we have the Ludwig. No special abilities, no special weapons, a pretty straightforward unit. Now what's interesting about this is the army point value of my platoon is 149 and Luke's is 154. Yeah. So they're very close but there's a five point difference. So I'm going to make that difference up. I'm going to spend five army points to give my barbecue squad... What? 
barbecue squad. <laughs> yeah, that's what they're called. Because he's got a flamethrower. Yeah. He'll barbecue up your hot dogs. Yeah. He'll have some <laughs> hot dogs just shooting out. <laughs> So my barbecue squad is going to get the airdrop ability. As I was saying, it costs five army points. So that will make us even. The airdrop ability means I get to hold them off the table. That's why they haven't been deployed yet. And then the first time I do my unit phase, when they go to be activated, I have to spend a march move action and then drop them anywhere I want on the table. Yeah. But it has to be at least 12 inches away from any of your units. All right, so it could be an interesting strategic advantage for me. We'll see. But let's get things started. Now, the way we're going to do this, I'm going to sit on this side of the table. Luke, you're going to go over to the other side of the table. And you guys are going to watch from Luke's perspective. Luke is going to be like the commander of his army. And you guys are going to be like the generals sitting back in headquarters, looking at the intel, taking in some information, observing what's going on. And then you guys are going to provide him with advice that he's going to use in future episodes. Yeah. All right, ready to get this thing started? Oh, Give yeah. Five. <laughs> I stole some of your lucky lukeness. <laughs> so for the first round, we have to do the initiation phase. Exactly right. Now we have to roll a number of dice equal to the number of units yeah. in our army. So I have seven. How many Six. do you have? Six. Okay, so I'm rolling seven dice. Three. I rolled three, two. That's a tie. You have to re-roll ties, so let's go again. This time I rolled two. How many two. did you roll? Three. <laughs> Four. 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 Okay. Well, that means I had the lower number, so I'll be going first. <sighs> All right, so I have my two orders here, and you guys can't see my command section. Bazooka Joe is actually hiding right behind this wall here. <laughs> and then through these windows is the artillery strike unit. And so they're peeking through these windows, and they can see through these windows here to your leader, Luke, and those laser grandeurs. They can oh. see the zombies oh. over here. They can see this unit here, and we're going to try calling down an airstrike. So to do that, I have to spend one of my orders, and I have to roll a die. If it's a hit, I can do this airstrike ability. It's a hit. Okay, so no! I'm going to give my unit a reaction token just because I don't want to forget doing that. So that's going to get tucked in here behind this wall. Oh no. And now I am going to target those laser grenadiers that I can see, and then I can also target another unit within six inches. It turns out your leader is sitting right there as well. And as you guys can see, Luke's command section, Sigrid, is sitting in here right there with him. So that's a second unit that's within six inches. So I'm going to be targeting both of these. Now, I'm not going to explain how we determine how many dice to roll every time I do an attack because we've talked about this in the instructional series, but I want to remind you here just in case you've forgotten. I'm attacking right now, the airstrike is this long tom, and I'm attacking against soldier units that have an armor value of two. So that means I'm going to be able to roll five attack dice, and each hit is going to translate into one point of damage. Now, I'm targeting two different units, so I'm going to roll five dice for one unit and then five dice again for the other unit. So I'm going to roll five dice first against the Laser Grenadiers. Let's see how I do. Two possible Ooh, hits. hits. Now, Luke, you get to make an armor roll. So you get to roll the armor value of your Laser Grenadiers, which is how many? Two. Okay, so you go ahead and roll two dice. Let's see if you get any hits. Luke one. got one hit. So one of his hits will cancel one of my hits. That means one of my hits did oh. get through. So you're going to lose one of your Laser Grenadiers. Because remember, during an airstrike, units do not benefit from cover. So which model do you want to remove, Luke? I'll just remove one of the weaker dudes. All right, so that one's been removed from the battlefield. Now I get to attack again. So now I get to roll again, but this time I'm going to be attacking against Sigrid. Here we go. Two possible hits. That means two possible damage. Now, Luke, you get to roll two dice again for her armor. Oh, oh. no. So this is going to be two points of damage against Sigrid. And we're also going to be placing a suppression token on the Laser Grandier unit, as well as one on Sigrid. I'm going to show the damage by putting two red tokens on Sigrid. I have one order left, but I honestly don't have anyone I really want to use it on right now. So this order is going to go away. <laughs> yeah, nothing to fear from me, Luke. No. But let's turn over to Luke, because he's got four orders. Maybe he has something he wants to do. Yeah. So I'm going to spend an order to do a move action with the Axis Zombies because they're in range with the leader. That's right. So, um, their movement is only six inches, but they have the fast ability and they can go another six inches. But I want to go all my total 12 inches. You just want to get so, behind these barrels yeah. or these containers. Yeah. Now you'll notice Luke actually 12 inches would be all the way back here. So we're not going to make him measure each model. He's clearly able to move them less than 12 inches to get behind these containers. 
There we go. And I have to give them a reaction to it. And you're awful close to that barrel. Yes. So I've got three extra orders, but I don't want to use them. They're no use. Okay, so you're going to end your command phase yep. now? All right, so we're going to move on to the unit phase. So for my unit phase, I'm going to tell you right now, a couple things are going to be really simple. Bazooka Joe, I'm going to keep him right here. And what I like to do when I activate a unit and I'm done with it, I flip over my card. So I'm going to flip this card over. I want to keep him here because I want to continue to keep him hidden and use him during the command phase to issue orders. And the same thing goes for my artillery unit here, the observer team that's through these windows. I'm not going to activate them either. So this is being flipped over as well. But now I'm going to activate my tank busters. Now you may not be able to see them, but they're hiding behind this building. And what I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to give them a move action, Luke, and I'm going to give them an attack action. Okay. I have to declare the actions I plan to do. So the move action, they can go 12 inches. So I measure out 12 inches here. Ooh. I can get them, yeah, I can get them beyond the, the uh, containers here. So I'm not going to measure them individually. I'm just going to move them here up to just behind. So they have a little bit of cover there. And then I'm going to declare an attack against these zombies. Now, hopefully, the measurement is going to be fine. I could have pre-measured. I probably should have, but let's see. Oh, I can just get to this zombie here. Now, can I actually see him? <laughs> I can see his feet. I can see his feet right through here. I get down to his level. I can see his foot. Um, now, this guy here, unfortunately, let me check and see what kind of view he has. Um, no, I'd say I didn't put him very well, honestly. He can't see anything. And my other guy, this guy here, can just see the top of his head. So these two models here are going to be able to contribute attack dice. All right? Okay. But this guy, he's blocked. He can't see anything. Now I have to check and see if you have any cover. This is my leader here, the one who can't see anything. So you can see already I've made a mistake in how I place these guys. Uh, they're touching, he's touching this container, so this does not count as cover. However, they clearly have cover here, and if I draw a line to each of these models, they're all behind this cover. So they're going to get the benefit of hard cover. Luke and I have decided that these pieces but... here are hard cover, and these pieces here are soft cover. Now, what did you want to tell me? What's because the they're zombies, they don't get hard cover. We're going to reduce, reduce That's it to right. one degree. That's right. They go down to soft cover. These zombies, they're so crazy. They're moving all around. <laughs> they're not hiding very well. So they're actually going to be in soft cover. Very true, Luke. All right, so I'm going to get to roll my attack. So with two of my guys firing, I'm going to be able to roll a total of four dice. And I got two possible hits. Luke, you go ahead and roll. You get to roll two dice as possible armor. Oh, yes! are you kidding me? Now, the only thing is people can't see it, but you rolled two hits. Yes. So, excellent. You've canceled out Ooh. both of my possible hits. And normally, I would give you suppression except for one thing. Those zombies... Can never get it. Nah, they're not worried about a little bit of gunfire, even if it's coming from bazookas. All right, so my tank busters, they kind of missed with those bazookas. So, I'm going to flip these guys over. Now, we forgot something, Luke. What was it? I had soft cover, but I didn't need it. I rolled too perfect. That's right. Luke did not need the soft cover that he was allowed to have. Okay, um, what am I going to activate next? Well, I'm thinking about activating my sniper team, which is hiding right up here. The only problem is, sure, they can see lots of stuff. I'd love to be able to take a shot at these zombies. I really would. The problem is, they're in hard cover, which is reduced to soft cover. Yeah. At most, though, I can only get one potential hit against them. So that soft cover would automatically remove any damage. There's no point uh, in shooting at them. Uh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although I can attack the zombies, Luke. Remember, the sniper gets to ignore cover and armor. Oh, yeah. Right. And because I have the spotter here with him, that means when I roll blank sides, that actually counts as a hit. And because I have two actions, I'm going to do sustained fire. So even if I miss the first roll, I get to roll again. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, so here we go. First roll. This should be easy peasy. Okay, so one miss, I can re-roll again, though. Yes! Okay, so we can see how this is going to go. What next? Well, I have my Grim Reapers, another unit you can't see. They're hiding right behind this building. I am actually going to move these guys. So they have 12, and they have the jump ability. So they can hop over this building with no difficulty. And I'm just going to measure it here and see if I can get to this barrel. And I'm checking all of them at 12 inches, and I can see where they're landing. So I'm just going to pick them up. They're not going to be quite touching. They can't quite get there. I'm actually going to put my leader back here. I'm going to put him in the middle. All right, I'm going to make sure he's behind cover at least. Um, and that's it. Actually, 
Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to put them like that. And they can't hit anything. They have an attack range of 16. Let me see, Luke. I'm just eyeballing this. No, I can't get to the zombies. I can't get to anything. So, Grim Reapers are done. Um, but hopefully they're set up for next turn to maybe do a reaction or something. I've got my hammers. Another unit I have hidden <laughs> over here. And Can they attack? They, they only have their fists. Yay! Okay, so... <laughs> I don't even really see the value of jumping them out at this point. Um, I can just come and attack them with like a tank or something. You, yeah, you know what I'm going to do actually? I am going to just, you guys can't see this again, so it's a little anticlimactic, but I'm going to move them over a little bit. Again, less than their full 12 inches. I'm just going to move them over to the side here, like so. So those guys are done. Last unit I have to activate is my barbecue squad. Ooh, I better bring some hot dogs. <laughs> okay, my hot dog squad. I have to airdrop these guys in by using a march move action. And I've looked over the battlefield, and I think I'm going to drop them right here. This is 12 inches away from your enemy units. I'm going to try putting them, and Luke is acting with glee, which I don't like. But uh, I'm going to put these here. Got my little flamethrower guy. Got them all. Hopefully tucked well enough behind this wall. So I'm not going to be in too much trouble. Um, I have gorillas right here if you didn't notice. Yeah, I don't and think... And some dude who do 16 inches already measured I'm it. hoping the cover's going to be fine, and I'm hoping the gorillas can't quite reach them. But that is all of my units now activated. All right, that was my unit phase. I'm going to be turning it over to Luke now, and over to you guys to help him out. Let me say something first, though. On our series, we try to teach you how to play the game, and to show you how it's played. But we don't promise to teach you how to play it well. I already feel you like... You mean you're not going to teach them. I am. Oh, <laughs> Luke's going to teach you how to play it well. I certainly feel like I haven't. I feel like I've already made some mistakes that I might pay for later. But I'm just trying to have a nice casual game here, Luke. All right? <laughs> There's no trophy at the end of this. Um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to try to give you guys an overview uh, through the video camera of the battlefield right now. But I think you're going to need a little bit more information than that. So what I'm going to do is over at the Board Game Geek Guild for Watch It Play. I'm going to put a link to that in the YouTube description. You can go over there and visit. It's like a forum. And I'm going to post some more pictures, the unit cards that we're using in our platoons. More pictures of the battlefield. Try to give you a sense of the distances. And you can go there and look at that information and then propose your strategies to Luke for what each of his units should do. And if you want to have some of that conversation right there in the guild so that you guys can bounce ideas back and forth and talk things out, sometimes a form like that is a little easier to have a conversation in than the YouTube comments. Anyway, I think that's it. How do you feel about this going into the unit phase? Do you feel confident? Unsure yeah. of yourself? Confident. Confident. I like it. Confident uh, I'll get the barrel. Yeah, it does look like you're... I got, I got some guys close to the barrel too. We'll see. We'll see. Yes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this look at the first round of play. Until the next episode, thanks, thanks for watching. Oh.